Fuel pumps kicking on. Okay, as you can see, judging by my jacket and the snow on the car, it's winter here in Connecticut. And uh, also, Corey and I uh, both have grown out our beards a bit. And so obviously some time has passed. Now, the engine's in the car. We filmed the engine going in the car, but I'm very sorry to say that it seems the footage has gotten lost. So we won't be able to show you us installing the engine in the car, but we'll show you as much as we can. We have everything of wiring it all up, and that's a really important bit. And I'll explain to you some of the trouble we had installing it with the C70 convertible subframe in a second. We're sorry. These things happen. We're filming tons of DIYs. You know, the guys are filming six or seven DIYs a week. And, you know, there's footage all over. And we, we, we try to stay organized, but some things fall through the cracks. And, uh, and this did. It's not the end of the world, because this engine is probably going to be in and out of the car a few times. So. Uh, yeah, we'll just move on and get right into it. So yes, the engine is in the car. And really, installing it was more or less the same as removing it. Using all of the 850 accessories, such as the power steering and alternator, along with the correct forward engine mount bracket and C70 side engine mount, the new RN engine bolted in just like the old one. However, the difficulty was with the subframe. As you may already know, we are using a C70 convertible subframe, which has solid inserts instead of rubber bushings to mount to the chassis. It was these solid inserts that made the install a bit tricky. Because they have zero play, everything had to be lined up perfectly. Even if we were a millimeter off, the subframe bolts wouldn't go in. So, with a bit of finagling and a lot of swearing, we got everything lined up and bolted in. We did somehow manage to crack the fitting on our RN oil cooler, so we grabbed a new cooler off the shelf and we were good to go. As for the extra bracing on the C70 subframe, don't worry, that will all be going back in along with a few extra pieces once we cover the suspension. Really though, installing the engine wasn't the hard part. It was getting it running that was the real challenge. So. Let's go back to right after the engine was installed, where we started our wiring fiasco. We've got the engine mounted in the car. Corey did a little bit of tweaking on the subframe just to get everything lined up properly. And now it's time for wiring. Everyone's favorite thing and everyone's least favorite thing. Thankfully, Corey does enjoy wiring, so I'm gonna leave that to him. This is the original harness from the 850. This is the original harness from the crashed V70 that we pulled the engine out of. And then what's in the car is a junkyard harness that I pulled out of an M4.3 car, as well as this that I cut out of it. And all of that is gonna be one harness and the uh, car will run. And then we've got this magical thing right here. This is an M4.4 ECU that has been custom made by uh, Vast Tuning. And uh, as you can see, it has some wires coming out of it. That's because there's some additions made. So obviously the uh, 850 originally had a distributor with the cap rotor, wires and all that, we're going to be running coil packs, individual coil packs. And so in this ECU is the added ability of coil packs. And that's what this wire is for. We also have variable valve timing, which is what the blue wire is going to be for. So we have control over the variable valve timing, which is also very cool. And then this green wire is for that special intake manifold. Those butterfly valves and that intake manifold, we can control exactly when they open and close with this green wire right here. And then of course, this is the USB for the laptop. Now, normally, um, you'd be putting this in an OBD2 car and you can just plug it your OBD2 port and you have an adapter that goes from your OBD2 port to the USB but this is an OBD1 car we're putting an OBD2 ECU and so we just have a USB coming off the ECU so it looks a little daunting but a little bit of snipping a little bit of trimming a little bit of crimping a little bit of soldering and a, little, a lot of labeling and uh should be good to go as I mentioned before the most challenging part of this swap is the wiring for the engine management the main reason for that is because we are starting with an LH 3.2 car. Bosch Jetronic LH 3.2 was an antiquated engine management system found on early non-turbo Volvo 850s. It used a completely separate ECU to control the ignition system and a separate ECU to control the fuel system. In order to be able to tune and get the most out of our built RN engine, we are converting it to the updated Motronic system, which uses one ECU to control both the ignition and fuel. 
Aaron from Vast Tuning sent us a modified M4.4 ECU that will allow us to retain both variable valve timing and the direct ignition coils on the RN engine. Normally, this ECU would be plug and play, but because we have an LH3.2 car, it wasn't going to be that simple. I have crimper, um, nice open barrel splices, strippers, um, some nice Delphi crimpers for those open barrel splicers. 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 <laughs> and another type of stripper, a butane soldering iron, um, so I can do the heat shrink. So instead of soldering, um, I like to use open barrel butt splices um, because when, when you're soldering, it adds it's a lot of heat to the wire, which can in turn make them brittle and um, melt some of the insulation a little bit. So now I'm gonna start going through this harness, crimping it all together and put it in the car. The first step to converting to Motronic is replacing the entire main engine harness with one from a Motronic car. We used an M4.3 harness from an automatic 1997 Volvo 850 that I pulled from the junkyard. While there were some extra wires and plugs on the automatic harness, now the main A-side ECU connector will plug into the A-side of our new ECU. So a little progress update here. Um, I have the coil pack harness stripped off with the V70 harness um, and everything bunched together here. Um, so I just have to hook up power and ground on the vehicle side so I can start probing and figuring out um, all the other wires. The more difficult part is getting the B-side, or body harness side of the car, to connect to the M4.4 ECU. Since the body harness originally split into two plugs for the old LH3.2 ECUs, we need to modify that into a single plug that will connect to our new ECU. After studying the wiring diagrams, we determined which wires we needed to merge into the correct pins on a single M4.4 plug to make it all work. After staring at more wiring diagrams, next was to isolate and remove the coil pack and VVT wires from the original V70 RN harness and integrate that into our M4.3 harness in the car. This will allow us to plug in our coil packs and variable valve timing. After what felt like hours of wiring hell, finally, it was time to plug it all in, turn the key, and see what happens. What's going on? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Why? Don't know. I think it might have to do with the uh, relay there not being plugged in. You basically get nothing. Does the horn work? <laughs> horn works. Oh, Corey, wait a minute. There's a ground that's not hooked up on the main harness. All right, so we just plugged everything in, everything's wired up, but nothing happens when we turn the key. Like, absolutely nothing. All right, Jacob, try to start it. So I got nothing on the starter signal. It was just spinning, it wasn't jumping out. <laughs> it looks alive. <laughs> the starter is not engaging. It's just spinning. Uh, green wire is uh, 12 volts. Green wire is 12 volts. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I thought. So the green wire has nothing. The ground has six volts. So something backwards. So we've been having trouble um, with the starter here, not getting signal at the solenoid. Um, so then I realized the, the harness that Jacob got is from an auto. So automatics typically have a um, park in a lock or a starter in a lock, whatever you want to call it, um, to make it not start if it's not in neutral or park. So I, I looked at the, at the diagrams, figured out the in and out wires, just tied them together real quick to test and now we're getting power at the solenoid. So I'm gonna make this quick fix permanent and we should be ready to fire up. It's just, um, my heart is beating fast. Like I want it to start, but at the same time, I almost don't want it to start. Like, it's just like, you know what I mean? It's like scary, you know? You really, all right, here it goes. Fuel pumps kicking on. Uh, 
Yeah. So it has fuel because I hear the fuel pump running. We know it has compression in here, so spark. Or there's just no power at the computer. All right, we got spark. Holy shit, we've got spark? All right, so I was just on the phone with Aaron from Vast Tuning, who is super helpful. Uh, just kind of troubleshooting, walking through on the phone. We had a little bit of confusion because there's so many different wire harnesses and so many different variations of wiring harnesses from different years, all of these different diagrams, and we were looking at different diagrams, and this is a big, big mess. So we, this is a 1997 850 naturally aspirated automatic engine harness in a 1995 850 body harness uh, with a M4.4 ECU. There's just there's a lot of there's a lot of things. So we found that the this harness has different style knock sensor connector. So the old harness had two knock sensors and the con two connectors plugged into each knock sensor. This harness used two knock sensors that had a branch, a whole a wire harness coming off of them that plugged into a single connector, which is what this connector is right here. And we were like, how could this reach knock sensors? But And it's a three pin rather than a two pin, but because we need the knock sensors that have the harness that plug into here. Now, the connectors that look like knock sensors, which weren't knock sensors, plugged into the knock sensors under here. And the relay, which we found bundled up with the old 850 engine harness, this is the main EFI relay. This is important. This is the fuel injection relay for the fuel injection to work for the car to run. This wasn't plugged in. And this normally goes right around here. And we were like, well, how come the wire doesn't reach? There's no connector. We can't find it. Well, that's because it's buried under the intake manifold where we plugged it in before we put it in the car. So we're going to lift up the car because we can see it a lot better underneath. I'm sure we're going to find the connector for this relay under there. We're going to unplug where those connectors are plugged into the knock sensors. We're gonna get the correct knock sensors with the harness that plugs into this plug, then plug the relay in, the EFI relay, and the car should run. He is on. Yep, I know. Don't try to start it yet. All right, give it a good roll. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I'll tell you when. I tell you when. Unless no. you want to run on two cylinders. No. Let me plug in the math. Okay. Hey Corey, when I turn the key to the on position before I start it, can you make sure that the light on the ECU is not on? Okay. <laughs> we fry the ECU. Yeah, I don't want to fry the ECU. Let's see if it starts though. Oh, hang on. Let me get these things out of the way. All right. Ooh. Really? Is there a ground nut? You gotta turn the booster pack on. It's on. It's not on. It's, booster pack's on. It says 12 volts. No, you gotta switch it on. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, is that light on the ECU on? Um, can I switch it back and forth? You can. You didn't ask Aaron? Ah, lights on. Okay, turn it off. Now lights off. Okay. Lights on, lights off. Here we go. Oh, it runs! That's close, dude. I don't know if I call that a run. No, <laughs> so, a V8 in there? Oh, no. Holy That's shit. Yeah. That's pretty close, dude. Try to keep it running. All right. Yo! All right, well, it fires. The firing order sounds right. It's not popping through the intake. It's not spitting out the back. How do you feel? Holy crap. I know it's like an uneventful, like it's not just like running and idling right now, but we were literally trying to just do that. Like nothing is hooked up like correctly right now. But that that's just proof that if we just button everything up, this will actually work. We just didn't want to button everything up and then like run into the issue we just did all day. So now it's all apart. We know it works. We can put it back together. It probably right. needs knock sensors plugged in. Or yeah, the needs, electrician. It, it needs the right knock sensors. It needs the right knock sensors plugged in. Well, I couldn't have done it without without Aaron because I had no idea that that relay plug was underneath 
was, was in the trunk? <laughs> yeah, I was basically in the trunk. <laughs> we need a crisp high five for that. There we go. Hell yeah. <laughs> Thank you for staying late, Corey, and I'm sure it was rewarding to hear that. All right, our goal today was to get the car running, and finally we did. Uh, we were chasing a bunch of wiring issues, which is to be expected with a swap like this, and uh, we got the car running. So next step is to button everything up, finish doing the suspension, brakes, uh, get this thing on the dyno and get it tuned, and we'll go take this thing for a ride. So stay tuned for that. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Coming up next with 850 Project, we take the 850 on its first drive, button up everything under the hood, and start diving into the suspension and brakes. My boy Jacob got this 850R. Oh wait, psych, it's not even an R. But it's faster because it got a new engine. It goes vroom vroom. I gotta get my part.